Zweifelfront entzieht sich. Hey, what's up everybody? This video is all about the Netrunner and their rollability interface. So before we get into their rollability, let's break down what a Netrunner is. Now, now I was gonna say they're basically the hacker of the team and then I was gonna go into detail of how Red is different in the way that you know hacking in the systems work. But before I ex explain that a little bit, I wanna just kinda quote uh, what our Talsorian Games has in the Cyberpunk Red Book because it's, it's just so awesome, it's perfect. Um, they say, Netrunners are cybernetic master hackers of the post-net world and brain-burning secret stealers. <laughs> I think that's perfect. Um, but yeah, the post-net world, okay? So in Cyberpunk Red, we all know that there's no longer this safe, uh, constructed internet that's all connected and easy to get into. And it's just not the same. Post-Fourth Corporate War, uh, the internet has pretty much been destroyed. Um, it's corrupt. So Netrunners now, in order to hack systems, there's independent systems, they have to be within six meters of them to hack them. You know, they have to locate them and then they have to be within six meters. And it's, so it's no longer done like remotely from the safety of your home or a, a different location. Um, they have to be right there uh, to do it. And then on top of that, um, it's no longer VR. They're no longer in it and uh, that's all it is they're seeing you know the levels of the system and how it works and the programs and files and things they're interacting with but it's more like ar they're also seeing the real world you know they're seeing meat space they call it um so it's much more involved they're you know they're right there in the thick of it with the team and they could be taking damage or fighting with whatever's right there while they're also in the system in a, in a sort of ar uh look and dealing with programs and things in there. So it's, it's really cool how it works. I really like what they did with it. But let's get into that rollability, um, which is interface. So other roles, you know, you would take your stat, your, uh, you know, your what, whichever stat would be uh, proper for whatever your action you're taking. But you would take your stat and whatever skill would be for that plus a 1d10. In a net, with a net runner, it's a little different. You're just using your inter interface plus a 1d10. And that interface, um, you know, you have like nine different um, abilities that you can do with that. And sometimes it's contested depending on what it is. And sometimes it's just a DV table. And that DV table isn't even the same as we've seen previously, um, you know, like in, in other roles and other actions you might take where DVs are, you know, 15 or 17 or whatever, depending on how difficult they are. With Netrunners, it's a, it's a separate DV table that they have. You'll see there and it's it's... You know, it's like six, uh, eight, and nine, or something along those lines. You know, it's it's much lower because of the fact it's just their interface plus one d ten, depending on you know what they want to do. But before we get into those different abilities, uh, the first thing I want to mention is that interface determines how many net actions they can take per turn. So you'll see that they have if your interface is one to three, you're taking two turns. If you know four to six, you get to take three, and and so on. So. Um, that's the first thing that interface uh, kind of determines. Um, after that, you have the different abilities that you can do. And, and let me explain that. The first one is backdoor. That basically allows the net runner to break through passwords and other obstructions that might be in that architecture in the net. You know, the next one is cloak, and that allows them to uh, the net runner to hide their actions while they're there. So, like, let's say they go in and they steal some files and they go to a different level and they end up clearing it out and dropping a virus in there that they come up with and then they want to use cloak to basically hide all their actions and whatever that cloak is whatever interface you know plus 1d10 comes out to be for their cloak then that would be the dv level that another net runner would have to basically beat in order to uh with their using their pathfinder um to figure out what you know that net runner did so like if a net runner went in and did you know deleted some files or stole them and then dropped a virus and then they did a cloak and let's say they they were lucky enough to roll a 10 plus their inner interface is four so now the dv is 14. another net runner would have to uh basically take their interface plus a 1d10 and you know using the pathfinder ability and beat that 14 to see that that net runner basically went in and stole files and dropped in a virus and see who they were so that's pretty neat how they how they did that um it's 
you know, it, it's more than just you're in the net and do what you do and leave. Now it's like, I don't know, you leave a trace and you have to be aware of that. And uh, I don't know, things can come back and kind of bite you in the ass if you're not careful. And that's that's also very fun for GMs to to manipulate and mess with, you know? So that's really cool. Uh, but the next thing is uh, control. And that basically allows a net runner to control things that are in the architecture. So if there's like a control node that's on a particular level that controls security cameras or electronic doors or uh, maybe a fire suppressive system that's in the ceiling or whatever it might be, they would use their control to control that node. Um, the next one is ID, and a Netrunner uses that to identify files or things within the architecture. So if they get to a file, maybe to ID it uh, to that piece of data, they would have to uh, use their ID ability, which would be their interface plus 1D10, versus whatever DV um, the GM sets. And again, that DV is much lower and different. Just refer to that Netrunner uh, suggested DV chart that they give you there in the book. Uh, the next one is Pathfinder. I kind of explained how that would work if a Netrunner was using that versus a cloak. But Pathfinder is also something a Netrunner uses to map out the architecture, just generally speaking. So like if a Netrunner enters a system, they would use Pathfinder to, uh, you know, see what's in the system and the structure of it and how high they, they roll on it. Like say, once again, they're lucky enough to roll a 10 and they get another roll on that because it's a critical success, you know, let's not forget that. But let's say they, they get a real high number in the gym's like, oh, okay, that, you know, they would explain, yeah, this is, this uh, system is four levels deep and, you know, it has a file and a control node and a hellhound or this type of black ice here, you know, you would really deter, you know, be able to explain and see what's in there. But if you were to roll low using Pathfinder, maybe, maybe you'd only see what's on the first couple levels, you know? Um, the next thing is scanner. And this is pretty much like the first thing that, that a net runner is going to do because this is what a net runner does to locate um, the, the locations of systems um, in their area. So they would basically scan the use scanner um, and it, it you know it, it depending on what their interface is and what their role is, you know how the type of distance um, uh, they can basically see out you know and determine where a system is. Um, but that's what they would do to see where the system is. So then they know they have to be within six meters um, to see, uh, you know, or to enter that uh, that system. Um, and then the next thing is slide. Slide is 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 really cool because of the fact that um, when you are in a system, if you engage in a black ice, they're pretty much attacking you and trying to kill you like a hellhound, say. Um, and they're they're gonna follow you, you know, until you beat them. And maybe you're you're getting hurt and you, you're just not strong enough to beat them. So you would use slide to basically slip away from them. And then they, they can't follow you. You know, you basically slip away. So that could be very useful. Um, the next one is virus. And virus is pretty dynamic. I'm, I'm pretty excited about virus because of the fact that it's open world in a way that, you know, a net runner can come up with anything that they can think of in the form of a virus to leave into an architecture. And the GM will just kind of determine what the DV they have to, to beat to create that virus. Um, and maybe, you know, a more elaborate one will take them a little bit longer or more turns or something. So it's all very flexible and under a lot of GM discretion, but it also gives the player a lot of uh, flexibility and, 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 you know, creativity in, in the sense that they can create whatever they think of. Maybe it's a virus that you know, attacks certain things, or I don't want to give away too much because I want this to be open, but, you know, controlling certain things in that architecture, or, you know, a virus that puts cameras on a certain loop to look like certain things and then delete them after a certain amount of time, or I don't know, there's all, anything you can think of, you can create that virus, just work it out with the GM, it's going to have its own DV to beat, it's going to take its own amount of time, but that's how a virus works. The last thing is zap. And that's pretty much the generic basic Netrunner attack weapon. It's their, their, you know, I imagine, you know, it's like their, their zap gun. They're shooting a, a, a electric zap out their finger or whatever, you know. Um, and that, that works a little different depending on if you're attacking a program, in which case they're going to have a defense uh, stat that you have to beat. Um, or another Netrunner, which like you is going to be their interface plus 1d10 versus your inner interface plus 1d10. And that zap will do 1d6 damage um, to the program's res or directly to the Netrunner's brain if you're attacking a Netrunner. So that's going to go right, you know, to their HP. So there you have it. Um, that's pretty much how 
interface works for a Netrunner in the time of Cyberpunk Red. Uh, hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a like, give it a share. Um, subscribe to the Cyberpunk Uncensored channels and check out the links in the description and show me some love. I'd really appreciate that. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care.